Welcome to GRD 131 Graphic Design 1 to Exercise 5, which is Type Logos, Looking at Design Principles and Fonts, and it's under Unit 7, and it's just kind of an exercise to help us identify design principles in logos using just type and also identifying the fonts, which I think is what I already said. So this was an exercise we used to do in Illustrator in the classroom, so it takes a little longer to do this online. So I'm going to go over a couple more things than I normally would do online. So if you would go down to Unit 7, you'll see a Gravit link that you could open up. This is one I'm sharing with you. So you're going to click on this, not the exercise, but click on the shared link. And if you're logged in already to Gravit, it will log you in. And you should be able to save the exercise. But I'm not logged in, so I'm going to log in. And I'm going to log in to my regular Gmail account. And I'll log in and it says design was shared and you can inspect and save that means you can save it so that's what you're going to do first you're going to go over to file and go to save to cloud as and hopefully you have a 131 folder that you're going to double click on or click on and down here at the bottom where it has last name you can just put your last name so I'll put mine here and unfortunately it doesn't put a save icon for some reason I think it's a glitch so I'll have to contact them at some point but just hit enter and that will save that to your cloud so now you have it saved it's your exercise that you can share with me once you're done now what are you gonna do here there's there's sort of logos on the page these are just things I made up so they're they're nothing they're not real logos sometimes they're based on real logos and there's a bunch of stuff over on the side here uh, that you're kind of kind of drag and all you're gonna do here is kind of drag identified design principles just over right next to the logo. There's six logos. You're just going to do that one at a time. You could zoom in and identify the design principles and also the font if you can. And if you can't, you could just click on it and identify the font. And before I do that, I just want to show you something first. I just want to go over a little kind of design exercise here that I'll do really quick. And it's just a type design. So it's just a logo. Now, if I looked at this as a logo, Meriwether Industries. Now, I just use the term Meriwether because that's the name of a font. So I just called it Meriwether Industries. And if you look at the font, you should be able to tell that it's a serif font. And it's actually a modern serif font because that has really high contrast between the thick lines and thin lines. There's very thin lines in here. This wouldn't even make for a very good logo because of these thin lines because if when it gets small some of these thin lines would break up but anyway that's what it is right now now if you needed to know the font you could click on it and it's called Raja 1 and this is called Raja 1 and we may change that matter of fact one of the fonts we used and you could even look at these if you go back to documents and resources it may not hurt to open this up but under unit 6 there was a PDF called fonts and I'm trying to stick to these fonts although Raja 1 isn't one of these but remember there's the serif fonts there's modern serif font here Una which I think we're going to use that because it's a little more solid and there's the sans serif fonts and that's about it so you can keep this open because I'm going to try to stick to these even though this first one here is not that and I think what I'll do is like before I even change the font, let's just look at this as it's a logo and just to help you understand the way the design principles work. Now, I don't have all the design principles. I don't have house. I don't have all the ekbarfs. I have ones that we're actually utilizing. And the, the reason I say utilizing is because it helps with unity. Alignment helps with flow. Proximity helps with flow. They'll actually make different design principles actually come alive by doing that you know right now what kind of hierarchy do we have between these two things well none because they're kind of the same and nothing really takes precedence and in a logo you want something typically to take precedence because if it's Meriwether which is the name of the company and industries which is kind of the description this should be secondary this should be primary so you know what what could you do well you could take this and make it smaller now let me just point this out if you want to make text smaller you can use the point size or the pixel size and use that or if you scroll down a little bit if you click on auto scale font and if you ever have an issue here just put these things on auto that'll kind of bring in the text box around the type as much as it'll go it'll kind of auto fit around it but if you put on auto scale font that way you can drag this and if you I think if you just go in a 45 degree it should stay in proportion on the corner it shouldn't go in all directions so if you just do that and you, you might say oh well that's gonna give more hierarchy to that now does that work well we now have hierarchy that's bigger that's smaller but they're both bold fonts and they kind of compete with each other a little bit 
So what you'd want to do is do something else to make this stand out a little bit and this be secondary. So you might not want to keep making this font smaller and smaller, although you could, although now what you have is some very fine lines in there and it's centered, which is okay, but it creates kind of odd gaps on either side of this. So sometimes what we'll do is find a contrasting font. So if you have a serif font, you might look for something contrasting, something very plain like a sans serif font. For example, I might want to click on here and use a archivo or something like that. So I'm just going to type in archivo and see if I could find it. And there's archivo. I could even use archivo narrow, but I'll, I'll just use regular archivo right now. And that creates more contrast. And also, if you notice what I did is I brought it closer because that's proximity. I'm bringing this in proximity, meaning they go together. So by doing that, that's something called proximity. And let me put on my auto here and my auto here to kind of bring the box in. But, but now I have proximity. They go together a little bit, but I still have a weird kind of gap on either side. It doesn't look nice. It is aligned center, but it's not aligned, so they really go nicely together. So what can I do? Well, one thing I can do sometimes is spread out the tracking. Now, I only like to do that for design instances. You don't want to do a lot with the tracking. Sometimes for copy fitting, you have to do that. But what tracking will do, and or character spacing, I guess you could call it that, is it'll spread it out and make it look lighter. So it'll create more contrast between these. Because again, this isn't super heavy. There's fine lines in here, but if I spread this out, not only will it help the alignment because they'll they'll be more aligned, they'll be more like each other a little bit. There won't be these gaps in the middle here, but it'll also lighten it because it's denser when it's all together. So let me try that. Now, if I go over to character spacing here, I want to hold down my Alt key or my Option key and just kind of drag up a little bit and spread it out. Now, right away, you can say, oh, that looks cool, kind of, you know, doing something like that maybe. Uh, maybe you could kind of center it in the middle or do something like that. And, and now it, it still might be a little too big. You still might want to go here and make it a little bit smaller. So I guess I can just grab this thing and just make it a little bit smaller. And it got on fix there, so I'll put it back on auto so it doesn't hide anything. If it hides anything, just click on auto down here. And maybe I'll spread it out a little bit more. I'll hold option because then it goes at less increments at one time. And now that looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit more like a logo. Now, I could even put it in all caps. Sometimes all caps looks cool when you do that. I'm not going to do that now. It, here's really an odd thing. If, if I want to put this in all caps, I would have to use the pro option to put it in all caps. So if you don't have the pro option, you have to just retype it in all caps, which is really ridiculous to have that as a pro option. Uh, <laughs> to pay for that, but that's the way it is. So I'll just leave it upper and lowercase right now. It's not that bad right now. And maybe instead of using this font, I'll use the Una because remember, Una was one of the suggested ones. It's very similar, but it might be a little bit thicker. And I think I even have a bold version of that. So I'm going to change this to Una. So I'll type in Una and then select it up here. And now it looks lighter, so they don't contrast as much. But I'll use the bold version and I'll make that bold. And I'll probably make it a little bit bigger. Now, if you don't see that little red thing in the corner, that means auto scale font isn't on anymore. So I'll put that back on and I'll make it a little bit bigger. Not much, just a little bit, just dragging a 45 degree angle. And now it looks a little thicker. The fine lines aren't as bad. And now if I put this here, now I have something that kind of looks like a logo. And I'm just working with text. But one other thing here, just to, just to mention, you don't have to do this. And I'm not doing this as an underline. I'm doing this as a design element. But even sometimes just putting a line, and I just want to point this out. So I'm just going to drag this line across. And I, I won't make it very thick. And it's one, maybe I'll make it 1.5 and see what that looks like. I wouldn't want to make it any thicker than any of the lines that are in here than the thinnest lines because then it gets overpowering. And I'm even going to spread this down. I'm just using my arrow key and moving this down. And I just want to point out that sometimes a line, even though it's a divider, it kind of unites them a little bit. They have a relationship with the line because they both kind of align against the line. So that's why sometimes I might use caps here because it might look nicer with all caps along that line. But this doesn't look too bad. Definitely looks more like a logo than it was originally. I don't know what kind of company this is or anything like that. I don't think this is a great font for that. But what I'm showing you here is we would have contrast because we have the bold serif font, modern style serif font. And then we have a light sans serif font. That's contrast. You're contrasting two 
categories of fonts, and you're also contrasting the weight of the fonts, bold, lighter. And how are you making this lighter? You're making it smaller, you're scaling it down, you're spreading out the character spacing or the tracking, and what else is going on here to make this look like a logo? Well, there's, there's proximity. You could throw this up here, you stick this here, whatever. And what else is making this look like a logo? Well, it's, um, I guess it's aligned. It's kind of aligned. Now, you, you could spread this out all the way. Now, it isn't right now, but their alignment kind of, ma kind of makes it more like a logo. Now, is there repetition? Mm, not really. You don't have to put everything in here. It doesn't have to check off all the boxes. Is there repetition? No, it's not using the same font. I mean, maybe repetition, actually, in terms of the lines, this line kind of repeats the lines the strokes in there. So I guess you could say that. I mean, if you look at it now, this line kind of, if you took half of it there, if you cut it there, it would look like the eye. So there's some repetition in the letter forms and in this outline here and in this stroke that I put here. So that's kind of repetition. Is it balanced? It's balanced, but I don't know if that's a big part of the logo right now that it has balance. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look off balance. I mean, it is balanced, I guess. You could say it's balanced because this is on top of that. Basically what I'm saying is you don't have to put every design principle in here. And the font that I would use, now I didn't put fonts here. This is just a practice thing. I'll practice with the other one. But that's what I just want to point out, that we have contrast. We have proximity of where they are in relation to each other. We have alignment. They're both center aligned. And we have repetition, I guess, in those lines. That's kind of a, that's kind of a stretch, saying repetition. But we could. And you could even say balance, saying, you know, this, they sit on top of each other very nicely, like shoulders, feet kind of thing. There is some balance here. There's balance on either side of the line. You could say that. This, this could check off all of those. So this is just a text logo with a line, but we're always looking for some of these things. And notice, I don't have hierarchy in there, but contrast is creating the hierarchy. Um, we're working in this space. Things like flow, we might be creating flow with the alignment. You know, we're creating a very static kind of logo here. We're not looking for movement. This isn't an action thing. You know, this is a very traditional conservative company, at least by the name, Meriwether Industries. We don't need something on a big angle or anything like that, a lot of movement. So that's what's going on here. So what you're going to do for the rest of this exercise is when you come over here, you could even zoom into these. And a couple things I want you to do here. Now, you don't have to open up your layers because I'll show you what you could do. The first one is Moravian College. Now, I have these grouped together because it was just easier to keep track of them. They're grouped together. But if you click and then click a second time, you can actually see the font. And it says E.B. Garamond. And then if I click on this one, it says E.B. Garamond. Well, what do I want you to do with that? Well, I want you to identify the font. And by doing that, just take E.B. Garamond and you could just kind of stick it under here. And it's used twice. So I'll just say E.B. Garamond, E.B. Garamond. And that's just telling you, oh, well, maybe there's some repetition here because I'm using E.B. Garamond twice. So we have repetition. So in this logo here, and again, I'm just using this as an example. Uh, again, even though you'll do this one, you might look here and say, oh, well, it's using repetition. So whatever one, you could just go from the first one. There's, there's six groups of your design principles. So you could just start with the first one here and say, okay, there's repetition. And if I had to ask you why, it's repetition because you're using the same font. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that. Repetition because you're using the same font. What else? Well, alignment because they're kind of aligned at either side. Even though college had to be spread out, there was a little bit of tracking, character spacing, spreading that out. Now let me zoom in a, a little bit there, if you could see that. See, there's more space between the letters here. So that was done intentionally to make these align so that we have alignment. So I'll throw alignment there, because obviously that was an intentional design principle that we we're using there to align these. So they form like a little box. A little rectangle is what we have there. Now, obviously, sometimes you might have some kind of icon or something, but now they form a little box. And they're also very close together. They're nudged really close together, and luckily they're all caps because if they were upper and lower case, you'd have kind of more gaps in between. But they're close together, so I would say that's proximity. So you could say proximity is being used here because college is really close to Moravian, so they work as one unit. They're working as one unit because of proximity. So these are being used here. And is there contrast? Not really. There, I mean, not really using contrast here. It's just two of the same font. How about balance? I guess, yeah, they're kind of balanced because they, they both make the same shape, I guess, in a way. So they make like a, a solid block. So that's all you would have to do for that one.
if that was correct, I could be just throwing you off with, with ones that are not correct, but the same thing you would do for the other one. So that's all you're going to do there for that one. And then for this one, you're going to identify the font. And like I said, because these are grouped, you might have to click once and then click again. And I can see, oh, that's Crimson Pro Semi Bold. And then go down and look for it because it'll be down on the list. So I know you got to look around a little bit here. Uh, but I do want you to zoom in and look at things and then go back. And for all these fonts here, you could click on this one, click once, click again. And now you can see that's Archivo Narrow Semi Bold. And then you're going to identify, well, what makes this the logo? That's what, you're, that's what you're doing with design principles. What makes this look like a logo? It's just text. But what makes it look like a logo? Is there contrast? Well, look at this. Tell me if there's contrast. Is there alignment? Well, there could be. Is there balance? Well, what's balancing? I got something here and something here that kind of evens off. How about proximity? Well, there's something here that's fitting in that little nook. So there's a lot of things here that are making it look like a logo without any graphics, without any lines and things like that. I didn't mean to, to throw you off with throwing lines, even though this thing has a little half circle here, but there's some other things you'll see here. So what you're going to do is you're going to drag up the fonts that are being used here, and then you're going to drag any design principles that are making these look like logos. So whatever you think is helping look like logos. If something isn't really helping, like here, con there's no contrast that's really helping that look like a logo, then you don't need that. Is there contrast here that's making that look like a logo? Well, hell yeah. We have this bold and crimson pro, and we have this really small. You know, look for the things that are making it different with contrast. What's making it different? Well, big, small, bold, light, serif font, sans serif font, bold font, not bold font. I think I said that already. You know, so there's lots of things that are making this look different. And then it's creating a little nook here, which introduces other kinds of design principles. Alignment. Is it aligned? Well, of course, we have an S here and a P here, and they're both made bigger, so it's very symmetrical. This becomes a symmetrical logo by making the S bigger, even though typically, why would you have a big S at the end? There's no reason to, but it forms this nice little nook to put Pizza de Oro in there. And you know, and you could obviously add more, put a line below, a line above, you know, whatever you want to do. But I'm trying to focus on text and what's making it look like a logo and focusing on things like contrast, on contrasting different type categories. You never want to put two of the same font together. You never want to put together two serifs. You never want to put together two sans serifs, two different sans serifs, I mean. You can keep them from the same family, but I wouldn't want to use Crimson Pro here and then use EB Garamond down there. That would be something you wouldn't want to do. Not that there's not rules that can't be broken, but typically you don't want to use the same ones from the same family because they compete. They're too similar. It's like wearing black and navy blue. They're too similar. You want to find some contrast. So that's what's happening here. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to continue with this and just drag up the fonts first. Identify the fonts first. And like I said, if you can't identify them by eye, just click and click again. You should see them pop up over here in appearance. And then the font should be down there. I have them all identified down there. So you could just drag it up. And that's all you have to do for this. Just go through the six logos and do this. And forget what I told you here when you started. Go do it yourself. And maybe I'm wrong. I, I could be just leading you down the wrong path just to see if you're just going to do what I say. Same thing with this. I could be just telling you stuff just to throw you off. But anyway, go through these six logos, drag all these little labels on them, and then when you're done, you're going to save this, and this will be yours. Wait for the little bouncing, synchronizing thing to stop, and then when it stops, hit share, and wait for that wheel to stop as well, and... I guess it doesn't matter as much, but just always get in the habit of choosing developer because then I could go into your file and if I need to show you something or to correct something, I can. So choose developer first, then choose copy. Always choose the developer part first and then copy it because for some reason it knows when you copy the link, even though it's the same link, somehow it knows that you can edit that. So I don't know how they do that, but you're just going to copy this. When you're done, now I'm not done, but I'm assuming you're going to go through and do it. And then when you come here, you're going to go to coursework. And you're going to go back down to unit 7. And you're going to click on the assignment this time. And you're just going to go into add comment and insert a link and paste your shared link. And just click off somewhere up here if you want. And then 
just go to new window always do new window because it's really a hassle when I click on a link in my warren and it goes to grab it it's hard to get back out you might think we'll just hit the back button it doesn't always work like that I have to hit the back button like five times in a row to get it to go back sometimes so always choose new window down here and hit save and hit save again and you're done that's ex5 type logos hopefully getting you to identify design principles in combinations of fonts in kind of text type logos that we're looking at so that's ex5